everybody today on black monday i guess is what we're going to call it the stock market <laughs> taking a dive the crypto market uh taking a dive even before the stock market opened uh, a lot of the traditional hedges are down we'll talk about that as well as the current prices and uh yeah it's march 9th 2020 i am the crypto insider back with another crypto video for you um we don't uh, sell any products here at uh, the Crypto Insider channel, but we do donate to charity for each new subscriber to the channel. What you're seeing on the screen in front of you is our latest donation made to Adkid XRP uh, in the amount of 9 XRP. They'll break it down and send it off to all those uh, <coughs> all those uh, handles there. You see on the screen, they're all good charities uh, achieving their mission where we like to help them do that and get subscribers at the same time. Um, I should also say, you know, standard disclosure for all these crypto channels are doing it. Uh, I'm not a registered investment advisor or a certified financial planner. I'm also not selling any investment products. I am somebody who's worked in the fintech space for a long time. And, uh, especially with the fortune 500 banks and, and uh, the traditional banking models of, <coughs> you know, retail banking. So, let's go ahead and jump into some of the cryptocurrency prices. You know, I didn't make any videos over the, the past weekend because it was just the same story with everything down, down, down. And we have that here. We, ha we You know, you have one or two outliers that trade against... Uh, uh, or, or that are trading a little bit opposite. But for the most part... Everything's down by large amounts. Our H bar is one of the positions we look for. You know, we, we're keeping an eye on down 16.3%. I'm sure we're going to see Lincoln uh, Tezos or some of our other positions. Here, uh, Tezos down 14%, $2.37. Tezos is a good deal if you can pick up any at that price, uh, or if you're thinking about t buying Tezos. I would say that's a fair price. I mean, you'd have to do your own research and decide for yourself what you think a fair price is. But uh, $3.91 for Link, it's under that $4 mark. Bitcoin really crashing uh, through that, well, nine $9,000 mark, way down. Uh, crashing down to 77.36. XRP crashing as well uh, with everything else, but it's maintaining a little better. It seems to be able to hold on to this 20 cents for now. Uh, I don't know how much lower it'll go. No one really does. But I'm going to say that as the prices drop, uh, one uh, um, they can only go so low before people start um, getting greedy and start saying, well, you know, I'm going to pick up some at this price. And hopefully that buying pressure comes back and we can see some trend reversals. <laughs> right now it is ugly. You know, I'm not going to try to put lipstick on a pig and tell you how beautiful this all looks. It looks beautiful if you're buying, terrible if you're selling. So that's... That's the name of the game. You want to buy low and sell high. Uh, that That's the... Uh, Investing 101. Let's look at our uh, coin alive. So it is still falling. Uh, everything is in the red. And this is probably the same for every coin. We're just looking at XRP specifically here. Uh, 20 cents. Uh, 0 0.20361. Uh, but the low is 0 0.20. So there, I mean, there's a little fluctuation between these two numbers here in the past hour. So, I don't know. I'm not seeing any uh, greens, anything to be positive about right now. But all, all these can change uh, very quickly. These oscillators down here that, that list the oversold and overbought. I think people are, are going to start looking for... Uh, Safe money. Some of the Dow people may start moving money into crypto. Um, 
they're already moving it into the bond market and they pushed down the treasury uh, yield quite a bit because people are, are sort of fleeing out of the Dow right now. I don't know if that's just uh, pandemic fears or, or, or what, but uh, it's definitely going on. Um, next, the first story we have is from FX Street, Tanya Abrosimova, and we've covered her before. Uh, XRP recovered from the recent low, but the upside momentum remains weak. Important support is created at the 21 cent level below the current price. Uh, I don't know. When's this article? Okay. So we've dropped below the 21 cent support levels, 2050, the lower line of four hour Bollinger Band. Okay, well, this article doesn't say that much more than what we know it's dropping. She must have thought it might maintain uh, at this uh, 21 cents or whatever, but it has not. But it, it has maintained the 20 cents, and I think that's, you know, if it breaks 20 cents again, it, it's... It could happen. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it happened, but I'd, I, I mean, I did not expect to get back to 19 cent XRP. We'll see. Um, it, it's not far away. We're 0 .00361 uh, pennies away. Not even that now. We're, so we, we may get back under the 20 cent mark. I guess it just depends on the Bitcoin dominance, which, you know, is 64.68 percent see it's where it's been for the past few weeks no, no major changes in bitcoin dominance everything seems to be moving in tandem down so when that happens it's just a fancy it's a flight or a fancy of the market rather than problems with the fundamental of any one of these coins it, it's just what buyers and sellers are doing right now um, and the trend may continue a little longer. It will reverse at some point. I just don't know when that point is. I'm not really a, a technical analyst type trader. So I'm sure someone ha everyone has predictions, and they're not all going to be right, uh, obviously. But, uh, you know, what goes down must come up, and what, what goes up must come down. So keep that in mind. Um... This is another story I thought was interesting because it can be taking, taken several ways. Um, sorry, I'm just getting a ping from work there. Uh, China's pending Bitcoin mining catastrophe. This comes from decrypt.co. The upcoming Bitcoin halving is creating a perfect storm for miners in China who need to get more powerful rigs. But the virus has compounded supply shortages and money woes, plus more in Debing, the weekly crypto Sino roundup. China is slowly picking itself up from the COVID-19 outbreak, and businesses nationwide are also slowly recovering. Yet Bitcoin mining, though it initially appeared to be virus-proof, has suffered and could be in for way more pain. That's partly because thanks to quarantine mining rig manufacturers such as Beijing-based Bitmain and Shenzhen-based MicroBT were unable to ship new equipment to mining farms, which are mostly in the northwest of the country, where hydroelectricity is abundant. Coindesk says that the supply chain hiccup could have caused Bitcoin's hash rate to stagnate last month. Unrelated, but also problematic, was the shipping delay of 7 nanometer chips from Taiwan-based manufacturer TSMC. High demand from Apple and Huawei caused the chip makers to postpone its delivery from 2019 to early 2020. The new chips are denser, more powerful, and require less power, and are in high demand among miners. Um... The elephant in the waiting room. But as things return to business as usual, miners are facing a bigger elephant that has been lingering in the waiting room. The so-called, I don't know how to say that, mining catastrophe. The term refers to a scenario that many believe will cause a massive shutdown of many smaller mining farms in China. If the price of Bitcoin stays flat or drops further, mining becomes less profitable. Of course, it did drop since this article came out when uh, March 8th. It's now March 9th. Uh, da, 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 where are we in the article? 
Okay, uh, putting unbearable pressure on independent miners and smaller operation. That comes at a time the halving expected in May 2020 when miners will want to upgrade to those 7 nanometer chips to handle the more complex and computationally intensive proof of work. This looks like a perfect storm for everyone except the big mining operations. <coughs> The virus and its consequences caught lots of miners by surprise. Those who didn't upgrade earlier enough uh, are now facing dire consequences. Some observers say that this collective upgrade will result in a mining catastrophe for many farms, which are still recouping capital expenditures from the purchase of their old mining rigs. What's worse, the new chips on the block also drive up hash rate, making it more energy consuming for the oldies to mine Bitcoin. And we saw Brad Garlinghouse coming out against uh, proof of work mining uh, in Bitcoin and Ethereum and saying that it was, you know, a drag on the climate and uh, it's only getting worse from what they're saying there. Uh, naturally, some observers say a mining catastrophe can be avoided even if the price drops. Miners won't lose everything. Uh, he believes that sophisticated miners have recouped their infrastructure costs during the past three years. Uh, if you look at most energy product projects, they are looking out at a 20 to 30 year horizon. The reason is that compared to trading tokens, mining gives steady cash flow as long as the risks are properly mitigated. Uh, so the bottom line, uh, this author says he's still pessimistic that the little guys will be able to survive. It's analogous to how the wells control the crypto trading markets, with the smaller retail investors getting played. Similarly, the smaller miners respond to rather than control the market. Their fate is often determined by the electricity price they manage to negotiate. Uh, big mining farms and machine manufacturers move the market. Uh, Bitmain, for instance, not only sells rigs, but also mines tokens using its latest machines before pushing them to the market. Um, so, the reason why I wanted to cover this is because we got the halving coming up and a lot of people are speculating uh, about what could happen as a result of the halving. Some people, some of the technical analysis say that the halving's already built into Bitcoin price, and so people expecting a huge boost from the halving uh, may not see what they want. But as I read the story, you know, I, I can see it going either way. Um, what's going to happen is one of two things. Uh, the, what we're, the story basically is saying is that the supply is getting cut. You know, if not, uh, there's not enough mining or, uh, you know, not the same amount of mining going on for half the reward, the supply is getting cut. And generally that would lead us to think that the price of Bitcoin would go up. And it may. It probably will some. Uh, but if it's cut to the point where it's a catastrophe to where there's not enough new Bitcoin in the market, then the cost of doing everything in Bitcoin becomes very high if the price goes up. So any institutional uh, smart contracts or institutional buying to do whatever job they're doing with Bitcoin becomes more expensive uh, and they perhaps start looking at alternatives. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure whether uh, this will cause a, um, a huge drop in, in May or not. I don't think it will. I, I, you know, I just have the feeling that this is going to be... The, the things, <laughs> these miners and these large miners are going to get whatever it is they need to do it. Um, because <laughs> to have a large mining farm in China, you probably know somebody and you're going to be able to get what it, whatever it is you need to keep it going. But like you said, some of the smaller independents may go out of business, and we'll wait and see if that happens. Uh, but it looks like there's going to be, in either case, uh, it looks like there's going to be a supply cut. So uh, we could see, we could see uh, prices go up from that. I'm, I'm thinking we'll see a bump, at least an initial bump, after... Uh, after uh, May, uh, w when that halving happens, and I think, it, if I recall from from the previous halvings, it's usually a month or two after the halving uh, before you start to see uh, 
it really reflected in the price. So it, it, if it's already reflected in the price now, it would be the first time I've ever seen it reflected in the price before the event actually took place. But other than, you know, some run-up, some people buying in anticipation of it. Uh, this next article is just, uh, you know, general market interest. You know, you, we woke up today in the USA to a huge drop in the Dow, something like 1,900 points. Uh, and what appears to be going on, as I've read from a few different places, this comes from the New York Times, is that uh, oil prices dive as Saudi Arabia takes aim at Russian production. It looks like they're kicking off a price war. <laughs> so, I mean... <sighs> Oil is, you know, the blood that keeps everything going across the world still. I mean, we're getting better and less reliant on it, but we still use it in everything. I, and uh, Saudi Arabia was urging for production cuts t uh, with OPEC and Russia to stabilize oil prices as the demand decreases. So a lot of, uh, a lot of countries due to the virus are having um, having their economy slow and they don't need as much oil as, as they thought they would need. So as a result of that, stockpiles you know are building up and building up. Saudi Arabia naturally wants to <coughs> cut production and sort of stabilize the price. Uh, Russia did not want to do that. Russia on Friday rejected an agreement with OPEC on cuts in oil supplies to bolster prices. Because Russia rejected the agreement, Saudi Arabia stunned everyone, and they said, all right, we're going to increase production, we're going to make even more supply, and we're going to cut prices quite a bit, by 6 to $8 a barrel, I think it was. So, <laughs> now they are flooding the market with oil, uh, which is going to be good for the U.S. you know customer at the gas pump. Uh, they're they're flooding the market and kicking off a price war with Russia and Venezuela and Iran and even some American oil companies is what it says here. Um, Russia cannot compete with Saudi Arabia when it comes to oil. They know that, and that's the only reason why Saudi Arabia probably did this. Uh, it's a dramatic move in retaliation for Russia's refusal on Friday to join the OPEC countries in a large production cut as the virus continues to slow the global economy and with it the demand for oil. Um, so that's, that's what's happening there. And as goes oil, so goes a lot of other stocks because oil is the blood that runs all of our economies. There's pretty much no economy in a developed civilization that doesn't require oil. So, you know, oil, I mean, <laughs> it's just the way it is. It's getting less, you know, these these stockpiles, you know, and even Saudi Arabia has to watch it to a point because as, as we, we require less oil to do the same amount or more work, um, you know, you can only have so much inventory build up before you, you know, the balloon burst completely and you know they end up giving away oil <laughs> i don't think that'll happen saudi arabia knows what they're doing and they've got their their eyes on it but uh, it's just more uncertainty in the market and it's a huge overreaction in my opinion to to the global pandemic concerns, everybody is overreacting. I'm here in Austin, and of course, we canceled South by Southwest, which is a huge uh, tech gathering, and they have lots of bands and movie screenings. And you know, if you want to see the cast interview or talk to the cast of your favorite show, they're usually down here. Um, all kinds of good stuff in film and things like that, but they canceled the whole thing. Uh, because, well, there's nobody even in uh, the county. There's not one confirmed case of, of the coronavirus uh, here in, in Travis County. But they, out of an abundance of caution with international travelers coming in, they canceled it and caused a huge problem, a huge mess. Um, I think it's going to be one of those things where, you know, in, in a year or two, you're going to be like, oh, I got this thing. I got to take two or three days off work and uh, then I'll be back at it and that'll be it. But, 
But uh, until we get to that point, perception is reality, and it's going to affect everything. Um, and money's going to move around different places. So you're going to see weird patterns emerging in charts, uh, both in, in the crypto market and out of the crypto market. Uh, we will be here c covering it all as it happens and, uh, well, uh, hopefully getting getting the jump on, on some good buys. Um, we're going to use this dip to, uh, to buy some more to strengthen some of our positions here. And, uh, yeah, that's about all you can do in the dip. Buy the dips. That's what they say. We're in the dip, so I'm going to buy. Um, there's my music. Go ahead, like, and subscribe. We will send a donation to charity on your behalf, and I will see you. I won't see you, but I'll talk at you tomorrow. <laughs>